Hello beautiful Pisces, welcome back to Intuitive Energies and here is your divine guidance message for the week. Um, I have, I usually do some meditative work to find out what the message is. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes less time and today was one of those times. Within the first five minutes I understood what the message needed to be for all of us this week and I wanted to play for you the vocal recording that I did for it. Um, if it had been too long I would have not played it but because it seemed pretty seamless in the way that it came out. Um, in other words when I do these sometimes there are very long pauses in between um, the information that comes in. It's almost like I, I go into deep meditation and then the messages come out and then more deep meditation the messages come out. Um, I started in right away, it just came tumbling in, so um, high time of, of like being in connection to your guides. I'm letting them really guide me in the last little while, so I'm not surprised by this. Um, even in my everyday life, I'm really feeling their, um, their hand in things. Um, they come in and try to um, veer me in a better direction all the time. Um, I, the reason that is is because um, mindfully because of physical changes in my body I sometimes struggle so I have um, asked them to come in and help me out when it is required so that I don't stay in a state of stress and um, I think that's helped a lot um, if any of you um, can also kind of do that if you're in that moment. You can always help. You can always ask for help. And a lot of people say, well, how do you do that? You ask for help. You ask for help. You just go, please help me. I'm struggling. I need your help. I need your guidance. Let And feel love come into your body and then just go about your life. And whenever you feel, you just call on them. It's thinking about them. It's something my grandmother used to say to me a long time ago. You know that people who have passed, if uh, they want your prayers. She used to say that. Just simply think of them. It's because they want prayers. And, but I always, she always said, it's just if you feel like thinking about them or you want that, you want to feel them, just think of them. And that was, that felt good. You know, that that felt good. It made me feel that you know it wasn't permanently over, right? Their physical body was gone, but their essence would never be far from me. And I love that. So while I let you listen to what came in, I am going to pull cards and lay them on the table and we'll talk about it after. The recording is about five minutes long, so it's not that long. Um, and it sounds very much well. It is me. And it's the message is pretty much what I would say in a regular reading, I think. Um, so I'm just going to play it and pull cards at the same time. Here we go. Enjoy. calling in Devite, I call in Mona and Liam. I'm going to put myself in a space of being able to receive. I'm going to try to push out the thoughts that keep crowding my brain. And I ask for your help to remove them. I'm going to concentrate on a beautiful white light of liberation, of peace, and of contentment. The goal is to see what I can bring in for a message for the week, for the collective, or anybody who happens to stumble upon the video. This message can be the one individual that needs it, or the many. I don't differentiate. Thank you, I already know, okay. You're making it clear 
that just because we receive a message for just one person doesn't necessarily bring less importance to it. We always put a lot of emphasis on quantity instead of quality. You're having a conversation with someone. And your words matter. And I give you the example, are you talking to one or are you talking to a hundred? Which one do you think will have a greater impact? Well, it depends who you're talking to. If you're talking to a hundred people, Who can't be bothered which is rare because at some level you end up touching somebody but let's say for purposes for this exercise you talk about to a hundred people you feel like there's many people in a room perception is important what you perceive or who you perceive received your message is something that is only in your mind. It's something that comes from you. I've had people that I thought were completely engaged. They look at me with eyes like, yes, you've given me the answer to everything. But then when I check on them, they haven't done a thing. But then there's that one person, that quiet person was taking it in. It was hitting all the major soft spots, sore spots, the ha-ha moments in all of them that propels them in a direction that even I wouldn't anticipate. And if that one person becomes the next big thing, the next Tony Robin, Wayne Dyer, Was it more important? Did I have a hundred people in the room or the one? If you place more important on the money, on your ego, not only is it past the purpose of what you're supposed to be doing here, you're missing the point. Not only are you past the point of getting it, you will remain unfulfilled. We need a world where we can be of service. Most of the time, we could meet our needs with much less than we think. Our perceptive of what we need in adoration from people, in what we consider success, is a lot less than what we perceive. We calculate things by accumulated quantity when we should be calculating in quality. And that was it. And I hope that you got that message. It's, it's very clear when it comes in, um, but in this case, um, I don't know. I never know if the message is crystal clear. Um, it's funny. I, I was going to keep shuffling, but I just didn't want to disrupt the uh, voice. And I know it annoys a lot of people when you're shuffling, when you're speaking. So I decided to wait till after the message was complete to do that. Um, right away, the, the card Pride came out. And I love myself. And I see myself in everyone. Um, is the, the message of that is important? In other words, when you look out to whoever you're speaking to, you see yourself, somebody who is in need of a service, somebody who is at the spot where you once were. You know, if we're talking business-wise, if we're talking love-wise even, we're all needing of something, and that's what makes us who we are, right? I want to be of service to people because I there was a long period in my life where I felt very alone. 
abandonment was a theme in this contract for me. And somebody who is feeling left alone and not seen is propelled to try and be seen, right? So that was the point to all of that, to go out there and try and do things. And how do you do that? Well, if you're a service to people, people will like you, right? Very much like a singer or an actor, right? It's the love that you crave from the people, the attention, the acceptance. Um, you soon realize, though, it's not really about that. It's just a vehicle in which to bring you to service. And I've, I've understood that through my lifetime. It's a vehicle in order to bring you into service. Um, but you need to love yourself and see yourself in everybody. That's the other part. Um, like I was talking about in there. Your perception of what, how important you are to the world is something that has to do with ego and pride. Um, everybody, example, everybody's always asking, oh, are your kids, like, you know, successful? Did they go to school? Did they complete everything? Did they're doing... Um, what are they doing now? Are they still living at home? These are all things that are perception. People put their perceptions on you. And they deem... They will grade it in their mind as they ask. And you will even help them grade it as you're having the conversation. Oh yeah, no, he didn't go to college. Um... No, he's not working right now. Oh, failure, 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 right? And they won't register it. They'll go, oh, no, it's good. They got time. They may turn around and say to other people after, do you know they're still living at home, right? And one of them doesn't work right now, okay? That's deemed success, perception, all like this hierarchy of success and failure. You are, we are all graded by this system that we have implemented in this world that only really, truly hinders us, to tell you the truth. What is successful? Successful is managing your money properly so that you can survive and be of contribution. For example, my younger son works for a time, keeps the money and contributes it to the family. When he needs more, he goes out and works for more. That is a system that he has implemented for himself. And I'm okay with that. To him, that's his success. That's the way he wants to do it. Will it cause him problems? Yes, but it's his results and his experiences to have. And he knows that he must contribute. That's what we have instilled in him. You must contribute. So, do I grade him the same as the world? No. Before I had children, did I grade other people the same way? Probably, yes. Yes. Before I got older, enlightened, and see the difference between success. So, does he consider himself a failure? I don't know. I hope not. Maybe I should have a conversation with him about that. Perception. Perception. Of whether you are doing right or not. And we're going to spin back around to pride. As a parent, it has to do with pride. Oh, I'm proud. My my child has gone to school, has succeeded, is able to, you know, pay all the bills to everybody around them and whatever. But have you looked deeper into their lives just because it looks good on paper? Are they happy? Success should be measured in what they want to do with their lives and how happy they are, not the size of their bank account and whether or not they can buy a condo apartment. Okay? This is pride. Pride to tell other people, my child is successful in the echelons of society. That's pride. That's the ego. It has nothing to do with actual success or actual... Um, it's, it's not even the word success, it's actual fulfillment. Are the beings fulfilled? I would have said years ago, a, a thousand people in a room means success because then uh, they pay to come and see me, uh, I'm doing the work that I love, which is fantastic and it's something to strive for. 
I'm not saying to suddenly go, no, I don't want to talk to a thousand people, I only want to talk to four. I'm saying that if you are talking to four, don't downplay that event in your life. Don't look at it as in, well, I'm not successful really because I only have four when they have a thousand. Treat that room like every individual is going to take what you have to say seriously and they're going to implement it. It's going to make beautiful changes in their lives. Whether these are friendships, partnerships, uh, um, business models, everything that you do, you need to do it in intention. Not from societal pressure or um, preconceived <laughs> notions of what life should be. In that case, quality becomes a lot more important. And you would probably be surprised of the conversations, not even business, not even love, just good old conversations that you've had with one individual who you think was not affected by anything you had to say, who then went on and implemented the stuff you were talking about and created something fantastic. They may not even aware that you were the cataclysmic cause of this movement. So take proud out of it. Take um, what you think the world needs or what you think people will think about you. Concentrate on the quality of what you are bringing into this world. Concentrate on the few. The other part of this, as I was listening to it for the second time, I could hear... Um, Davite say that the we put too much emphasis on the idea of like you put 10 people in a room that's called success. We put the too much emphasis on the the final goal. The 1000 people, the 10 people. It's like, "Oh, I succeeded because I managed to get one person in." When he says that the actual success of it, when you should feel successful, is when you start implementing what you are doing. In other words, right at the beginning, as you are building whatever you're going to talk about, that is a success. That is when you are succeeding. That's when you should feel pride in yourself. Knowing that you're going to contribute to the world something fabulous. <laughs> my god are we doing F words today <laughs> I fork and hope not <laughs> okay so here we go I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn yeah we put too much um, we put too much emphasis on failure that's the other part failing I'm afraid I'm going to fail I'm afraid I'm going to fail. Oh no. You know what? I, I, I honestly think it's time the planet needs to go, well that didn't happen the way I anticipated. And anticipation is okay, but it is in the future. It's not, it's not in stone, right? It's like it's deducing. Like I've, I've deducted that if I do this, it will possibly. That's that's all a whole bunch of maybe. Because it's in the future, you're not sure how it's going to turn out. So when something happens, and it's not what you anticipated, instead of going, "Well, that failed," you can possibly say to yourself. Well, that didn't exactly turn out the way I thought it was going to, but maybe there's something here for me to see. Yes, it's a lot longer sentence, but it also takes the absolute negative um, vibe that comes with this word. If somebody tries something and then they fail at it, you see them moping around, it's like a depressive mood comes in, I've tried and I've failed, big or small. 
instead of turning around going, wow, what a ride, oh my god, I tried that and whoa, that didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted to. Yeah, that did exactly, I didn't, did this, I didn't, it, I didn't anticipate it happening this way. But, you know, I'm going to take a rest, I'm going to take a look, and then I'm going to see what else I can do with this. Can I do anything else with this, or do I go a completely different way? What kind of wisdom do I, I retain from this? Where did I step in it, and where did I step above it? You know, like, what is there? Absolutely. Because it's not a failure. You succeeded at trying something. You move forward. You move forward so that it ended up somewhere you weren't expecting. Relationships. I'm attracted to those people who serve my higher good. That's the other part. Start hanging around with people who think this way. The way that I said. You know, I'm sure you've had those people in your life who've said, you know, you can try something else tomorrow. You sometimes react to them as they're uncaring. They're just telling you that you haven't failed, that it's not the end of the world, that you you can get back up and try again and succeed. And when you do, they'll be right there cheering you on there too. Because they won't sit and wallow in defeat and failure doesn't mean that they're against you. And it doesn't mean that they don't care. They maybe are not as close to it. They don't have that negative um, reinforcement feeling that you attach to it. They just see you tried something and eh, you can try something else. Sometimes we call these people optimists. Oh, why are you so optimistic all the time? And I'll tell you why. Being one of these people is because you don't want anybody to give up. We don't want pauses or speed bumps or obstacles to be the end all and be all of the journey. We understand that sometimes you need to take a break and look around. Absolutely. Sometimes your heart will break and you're going, this sucked. That's okay too. But what's also very very crucial to the situation is not to stay in that energy is to get back up on the horse don't give up on yourself because then you give up on yourself when you do that when you stay there too long you're giving up on your dreams you're giving up on yourself and somebody say Jane my dream was done it was obliterated it was gone no your perception of what that was going to look like may be done but dreams are never done. You can always refashion, rejig, relook at everything. You have endless barrels of possibilities available to you. The only time that you think it's done is because you perceive it that way. That's it. You perceive I failed. Your ego gets in the way. Oh, everybody does it that way. Eh, who's everybody? And who says it's the best way of doing it anyway? We can all agree on a certain level, especially Pisces. And I know this for a fact, because I am a Pisces, and I've looked at the world through the years and thought, wow, that's really broken. A lot of things. How does that make any sense? For example, the biggest one. We spend on, we go to work and spend on things and owe on things that we can't live in. I spend on a car that I have to pay for. I spend in a house that I can't live in 
because I have bills to pay. And the cycle goes round and round. And that's when I realize that we have in the society become slave to dollars because we can't live without it. We have created a prison for ourselves. This is very hard to break out of. We're trying. If you really look, if you get quiet and you listen to the generations, they are desperately trying to get out of it. Sometimes these people are called lazy. You just don't want to pay your due. No, I just don't think they want to become um, prisoners of this cycle. It is very hard, though. It is very hard. There are big forces at work. Big, big, big forces that are not really concentrating on the well-being of the individual to let them be who they are rather than what society wants them to be. Okay? I could go into further conversations about that for myself personally, but I, I'm just going to leave it at that. You understand, if you've been quiet in your life and you look around, you see the insanity that ensues. That is why so many times in my life I have thought, I don't think I'm on the right planet. <laughs> How can everybody just keep doing all of this and be okay? Yeah. But I've come to understand that people like us come to try and be of service, of help, to find a spiritual way, to find a better way to evolve and as much as we like to sometimes I like to sometimes criticize the younger generation they are really moving us in a direction of they're not taking any crap they're not taking any crap probably because they've heard our generation complain about it so much hey The best that you can do right now is to help yourself break out of these things, these type of things, the pride mentality, the failure mentality. Concentrate on the quality of the stuff that you put out there. Make sure that what you're putting out there is what you want, not a quick sell, not a quick relationship, not a quick life. Do a life of intention. The best way to live your life is live it with intention and live it so that you are happy with it. So that when you wake up, you wake up thinking, even if you're having a sore day, even if <laughs> your back is killing you, or you have a headache, or whatever is happening in your life, you are still excited to be in your day. That you know that there are going to be components of that day that are just going to make you feel good. They're not toxic. They're not spending more money than you have. They're not being in relationships that are, are going to steal your energy. It's the kind of day where you give to people and you receive beautiful energy. And you keep adding to that every day. And when somebody comes in with societal norms and stuff and starts telling you, you go, no, no, I, no, I don't live my life that way. Just like when people say, oh, don't tell me about my life. I don't want you to predict some bad stuff. And I go, I, I, no, I don't live my life that way. And I, I don't do that. I'm not like what you've heard. I'm different. And I say it with conviction. I'm here to empower you, not take your power away. Very different. You're always in the driver's seat. You're always in the driver's seat. You should live your life that way, just not with, not even with just tarot readers, with your entire life. Break down these things. Keep saying it. Keep living it. All right. So, I'm going to take a few charms. A few charms. There's like, you know, 20 that came out leaves. Um, what's coming in with this, what I'm hearing is that summer is quite on its way. The leaves are big, so I'm feeling like we are in a season where things are really growing. Okay? That's what came in. Things are really, really, really growing. Uh, your leaves, your little, your little leaf that came out, that sprouted, is turning into a little tree. This is a tree of life. But it's turning into a little tree. 
okay so there's definite movement there's growth there's growth we're, we're starting to really feel the difference okay let's see what else we have mm -hmm. the anchor and the wheel and the turtle <laughs> all right so let's see here okay this says uh, at kind, compassion, strong, happy, thankful, brave, peace. I would say that these are all words that you need to kind of look at and pay attention to. Okay? Those are the most important thing. What makes you feel free, true, honest, right? Peace, brave, strong, happy, thankful, compassionate. These are all really, really good things and they're higher vibing energies. They will always serve you better. Yeah, be S, serve. Be of service to people, okay? Serve yourself, serve others. Yes, serve yourself too. Serve yourself too. Be kind to yourself. Be of service to you. It's not just taking stuff from people. Be of service to yourself, okay? Don't let those negative energies come out. All right, so we have a little clock, very cute. Um, again, I feel that this is related to these leaves in that tree. It's like time is moving forward. The more you go, the more you learn. It's all about wisdom. You should be sitting in gratitude of how much you've learned since the beginning of the year, since last year, since four years, since five years, since your entire life. You should be taking track of time of just how much wisdom and how that's contributed to you feeling more at peace um, more centered better like us like I've repeated a few times now the situation sometimes don't change but your reaction to it has has definitely changed and that part of it is what you should be concentrating on not that oh that person hasn't changed you're still doing the same thing it's like yes but I'm not reacting the same way I did. It's not mattering that much to me anymore. I'm able to just let it be and move away from it. That is a gift, my friends. All right. So, again, I, I still feel... I. I still feel that because of the ring and the thing, I feel very much... Um, a Jupiter type um, I don't know if it's Jupiter or not but I always feel it's Jupiter this this thing is Jupiter okay and it's because we're expanding I feel the expansion the expansion in the way we think we're going we're breaking walls I feel like a big energy surge and walls falling down that's what I see right now and I think that's wonderful. You have the turtle here. For some of us, it may feel like a stop and stop, okay? The wheel, the anchor, and the turtle all telling me that sometimes we're really moving that boat and it's going full speed, and sometimes the anchor drops and we need to stop. And for most of the time, even though we're having some momentum and direction, we still feel like we're stuck sometimes. Like I'm stuck. Where am I going? Why, Why am I not moving, right? So, all right, we're going to put these here. I'm going to take the singing bowl, do what I do, and um, let's see how the energies feel for this week. I want you to take a moment, if you can, and write down in the comment section, what has changed for you? What's one perception that you, like I said, you realize that you were not reacting the same way to? I'd love to hear from you. The reason I'm having you write it down is for you to also come to that realization. When you write it or explain it to somebody, it's like a moment of clarity that comes to you. It's like having a conversation with me and you say, you know, Jane, it's true. It had done to me, he'd done that to me 20 times, but then this time he did it and I did this instead and felt okay. And that realization st re reminds you just how far you've come, how you've rewired yourself to deal with the situation. And that's what I want you to share with me right now, so that you can come to your clear moment of realization, so that you can be the one 
that has that quality moment. All right, so let's do it. Be careful. This is going to be very loud if you're using headphones, so please turn them down. And let's do the four corners of a bowl, which it doesn't have. <laughs> but let's do the four, um, you know, north, south, east, west. So let's see how this rings true. The energies have been very clear in the last, I, I would say, I can't, I've lost track now, three or four weeks. Uh, hopefully it is still very clear, very true. All right, let's go. All right, my friends, nothing to report here. The energy is still very clear, very true, very, very clear. Um, so that always means to me is if you need a conduit, uh, an open conduit, it is open for you. You simply have to sit. It, it doesn't even need to take that long. Um, remember that you can meditate while you are having the sound of vacuum, while you're taking a walk outside, um, while you're just simply sitting doing absolutely nothing, or when you're doing something that doesn't require much brain power. Um, you could even be playing solitaire. It's one of those things, repetitive things that you do, that you're concentrating very hard on one thing specifically, because it's hard sometimes to clear the brain of everything. Just think of it as meditation, as clearing the brain enough so much that you leave a lot of room for any kind of guidance come in, any kind of solutions to problems to come in. It's when we clear the brain of, I would say, 90% of the stuff that is coming in constantly, that is when we become a very bigger conduit to something and make sure that the things that you are thinking about are high vibes, not negative things. Negative things takes a lot of room. It makes the room of your mind very dark and makes it very hard for anything else to come in. So, clear it out. Pick a few things that you want to think about. High vibing, good feeling, and let the messages come in. Okay? Thank you so much for being here. As always, I hope you've enjoyed your beautiful spiritual guidance message for the week. Um, I know they're all spiritual guidance, but this one is usually just, uh, I don't know, I, I still don't know the right words. And as Spirit has often mes mentioned, words are, ugh, yeah, they're one of our biggest problems. We, we put a lot of emphasis on the meaning of words, and it's because they're so absolutely defined that there's no room for them at all. Um, and they cause a lot of problem. There, there's, they can cause a lot of problems um, because we sometimes just assign different meanings to them as well. There's, yeah, language is, is something. We utilize too much of the spoken and the energetic language is a little bit lost. So we have to bring that back in as well. But that's for another day. Thank you so much. So for members, don't forget, there is a video on Saturday for you. And it I do believe it's in the new moon that's coming in. So if you are a member, so you get that video, I will pop it up sometime on the weekend for you. And if not, I come back on Sunday with the weekly readings. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you a lot of love, light, and blessings. I will see you later. Bye for now.